So here are a couple of problems involving ray optics, uh, specifically utilizing Snell's law. Okay, the first question says um, we have a ray of light traveling from air through crown glass into water, uh, kind of like what you would have a, uh, in the uh, fish tank. Uh, calculate the amount the ray is displaced by the glass, given an incident angle and a thickness. All right, so we can label some of these um, some of these properties. Uh, air has an index of refraction of one. Crown glass is one point five two. Um, the incident angle is given to us as forty degrees, and the thickness of this layer is one centimeter. All right. So the um, the original um, path of the ray is diverted because of um, refraction at this at this um, air glass interface. So um, this distance that it's diverted through a one centimeter uh, piece of glass, that's what we're solving for. Solving for this delta x. Alright, so um, we can figure out theta of 2 using Snell's law. Let's do that. Um, so we have n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Alright, plugging in these numbers, we have 1 for air times sine of 40 degrees, that's the air side angle, equals 1.52 for glass times sine theta 2. Solving that for theta 2 uh, gets us um, 25 degrees. All right. So now I'm going to sketch out a couple triangles here that are going to help us figure out this delta x. All right, we can sketch out um, this leg of this triangle and label this little triangle, the red triangle, that has theta 2 as this upper angle. All right, and the bottom of this triangle, we could label that as x2, maybe. All right, and then we could tra uh, uh, trace out another triangle that also has this vertical but goes all the way over to um, the original path that theta 1, uh, or that this ray, light ray had, right? And this angle right here is theta 1. All right, and if you look at these triangles, you can see delta x is the difference between x1 and x2. It's x1 minus x2. All right, so how are we going to figure out x1 and x2? Well, if you notice, these are right triangles. So we'll say, notice that tangent of theta right, is um, the opposite. So it's x over adjacent, so it's 1 centimeter. And this is true for each of them, right? Theta 1, x1, and theta 2, x2. So now I can plug that into this equation. I can say delta x is... Um, one centimeter times tan theta one minus one centimeter times tan theta two. All right, filling that in, I've got one, we'll put full precision here, a centimeter times a tangent of 40 degrees minus tangent of 25 degrees. And when you put that together, you calculate that, you get 0 0.372 centimeters. All right, so what that means is an object originally located right here, right, an object located right here would be observed by someone from the outside to appear to be at this point, right, because the observer doesn't take this bending, this light refraction into account, right, an observer uh, um, thinks that the object is here, when in reality it's back three, uh, 0.37 centimeters. So our second question here says a, uh, a light ray entering a fiber optic cable surrounded by air first refracts and then is reflected as shown in this figure. Right? So we want to show that if this fiber optic is glass and it's surrounded by air, that any incident ray will be totally internally reflected here. All right. 
So, um, first of all, we should ask, what is total internal reflection? Well, um, it's a ray that comes in at an angle um, that is greater than or equal to a critical angle, right? Um, such that none of it passes through and all of it's reflected. All right, and we calculate that critical angle theta c as an arc sine of the ratio of the um, index of refraction for those both of these materials. In this case, it's n for air divided by n for glass. Right, and if you plug those numbers in, that's arc sine of one over one point five two, which is uh, forty one point one degrees. Okay, so that's the critical angle. So what we're saying here is um, we want theta 3 to be greater than or equal to 41.1 degrees, right? Regardless of theta 1, right? Theta 3 is going to change, we just want to make sure that this is always the case. Okay? So if we look at this diagram and, and think about it a little bit, um, when theta 1 becomes smaller, theta 3 becomes bigger, right? If you um, think about this a little bit, you should be able to convince yourself that that's true. So that means if theta 1 gets bigger, theta 3 gets smaller. And if theta 3 gets too small, if it gets smaller than 41.1 degrees, then we'll have some leakage in our fiber optic cable, All right? So what's the biggest theta 1 could be? Well, 90 degrees, right? Or maybe just a little smaller than 90 degrees. Um, but uh, 90 degrees is right at that, uh, at that threshold. So theta 1 max is 90 degrees. All right, so I'd like to calculate um, what does that do to theta 2? Because a, a bigger theta 1 is a bigger theta 2. So what's theta 2 max? Well, I just need to use Snell's law at this um, interface. So n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. All right, so on the left-hand side, I have 1 for air, sine of 90 degrees. We're putting in theta max here. N2 is 1.52, and um, sine theta 2, where I'm finding theta 2 max here. So if you do that math, theta 2 maximum turns out to be 41.1 degrees. Well, hey, that's our critical angle. Well, that makes sense because that's how we find a critical angle. We're just tracing the ray the other direction. Right. So when we when you try to find a critical angle, you say what angle, what incident angle results in a 90 degree refraction, right? Which is actually not uh, passing this through. Um, we're doing the same thing here, but instead of coming uh, going out at 90 degrees, we're coming in at 90 degrees. That's why the math works out the same. Okay. So now we should say um, this maximum for theta two. What does that mean for theta three? Well, notice here that theta two plus theta 3 has to be 90 degrees, right? There are both parts of this right triangle here. So theta 2 plus theta 3 is 90 degrees. So if I have a maximum theta 2, that corresponds to a minimum theta 3, right? Because these are fixed. The sum is fixed to 90 degrees. So if this gets bigger, this is getting smaller. And if this is the biggest, this is the smallest, all right? So what we get for theta 3 minimum is 90 degrees minus 41.1 degrees, which is 48.9 degrees. So the minimum theta 3 we've just shown is 48.9 degrees, which um, is bigger than the critical angle. So we've shown that no matter what incident angle we have, um, if this is surrounded by air, um, the ray will be totally internally reflected.